amendments be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for McEwen. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Every time the hapless PM says, "How good is Australia?", we should remember this was a bloke who, when the country was burning, he bailed to Hawaii. Australians, like the, man, the marketing campaign asked, where the bloody hell are you? Great leaders are there in times of need, and over this summer, Australians needed leadership. But we got nothing. We got a couple of snaps from Waikiki while the Blue Mountains burnt. A PM who was focused on his own, own hide, not that of the people he is tasked to represent. This is a government led by an ad man without a plan, and Australians every day are feeling the heat. Australia was once a nation that punched above its weight, a nation which prided itself on the abilities to lead the world. Now we are declining in global rankings across the board. Australia's falling rankings signify a rotting government. This is a government more obsessed with looking out for their mates than they are stopping declines in standards. And each year it goes on, the further and further we fall behind. Let's look at some facts, Deputy Speaker. The Coalition has slashed $4 billion from the R&D tax incentive, contributing to a brain drain in the country. We now rank at 127, below that of Slovenia and Greece. Renewable energy investment is down. The investment in renewable energy has dropped 60 per cent in the past year alone. We are ranked 15th in the world for sustainable energy, equal last among wealthy countries. We join Chile and Argentina as the only OECD countries without a price on carbon or pollution in any form. Childcare costs are skyrocketing. Since the Coalition took power in 2013, childcare fees have increased around 34 per cent. That means Australians are paying more than $14,000 a year under the Liberals compared to about 11000 under Labor. We see school performances declining under the Coalition. Once ranked in the top five of the best performing school, Australia now ranks 16th. This means Aussie kids are three and a half years behind Chinese kids in math, in math education. They're also a full year behind where they were for science achievements in 2007. The cost of sending your kids to school is too high for parents. The cost of secondary education has increased by 125 per cent from 2010 under Labor to 2019 under this Prime Minister. The cost of educating your child in government schools from K to 12 is now $68,000. This figure climbs to $127,000 for Catholic schools and $298,000 for private schools. Our gender gap is getting worse. Under, under Labor in 2007, Australia sat at 17th place in terms of gender equality. In 2019, we fell to 44th out of 153 countries, a decline of 30 places. At this rate, we'll be sitting with Saudi Arabia in about a decade. Poverty is increasing under this government. In Australia in 2018, there were three million people living below the poverty line. One in eight adults and more than one in six children are living in poverty. Australia has the 16th highest poverty ranking out of 34 of the wealthiest OECD countries. But we are the second wealthiest country in the world. Medical care is getting too high for the average Australians. The cost of medical and hospital care has tripled in the last 20 years. This means some families are cutting corners to save money by foregoing emergency protection products like life and health insurance. The average price of insurance itself has jumped by 118 per cent. Meanwhile, Minister Hunt confirmed insurance costs will rise by another 2.29 per cent this year. Electricity prices have increased under this government. The ACCC found the electricity prices are now 20 per cent higher under the coalition in 2019 than they were under Labor. Under Labor, electricity prices were uh, hovering at around $1,200. Now they are in excess of $1,500 per family. Spending billions on defence, the government is, is claiming about $90 billion over the next 30 years to build ships and submarines. But what we found, we found last week, the, the company building the ships has said they're not going to meet the 90 per cent local content rule that we were promised, but instead try and meet 60 per cent, which they still refuse to put into contracts. Whatever happened to the country that designed and built and manufactured and sold and exported goods and inventions all around the world? Australia can achieve great things. Two men, Mark. Uh, Lidwell and Edgar Booth both invented the electronic pacemaker in the 20s. Nowadays, over three million people have it worldwide. The famous Hills Hoist, the most iconic Australian invention. Lance Hill created it for his wife in 1945 when their backyard became too small for their clothesline. The ute was an Aussie invention dating back to 1932 when a farmer requested Ford Australia to make a two-in-one car truck. We know what happened to the automotive industry under this government. Lewis Bant took that two-door Ford VA coupe and grafted the high-sided open utility to what we know as the ute today. Another great product, of course, was the electric drill, was, to, was another Aussie invention. Arthur Arnott developed a 75 kilo electric drill powered by a DC electric motor to drill through rock and coal. The dual flush toilet was developed by Australian Bruce Thompson in a way of saving water. It's estimated that around 32,000 litres of water are saved each year by Aussie households. Of course, the black box flight recorder was invented by Australian 
um, scientist David Warren in the 1950s. In modern times, a black box is installed in every commercial flight around the world. The incredible cochlear ear plant was invented by Australian professor Graham Clark in the 70s. These days, around 350,000 people now have the ability to hear because of Professor Clark's work. The first inception of Google Maps was developed in Australia in the early 2000s, uh, called Where to uh, Technologies. In 2004, it was bought by Google, and those Aussies helped develop that maps we use today. In 1851, James Harrison from Geelong created a mechanical ice making machine, the first refrigerator. Wi-Fi technology is used by billions of people around the world today. A key part of that technology came from Aussie John O'Sullivan's research at CSIRO in 1992. The ultrasound scanner that millions of pregnant women rely on was invented in 1976 by an Aussie firm called Oz, Ozonics. Nowadays, millions of pregnant women rely on ultrasound technology and use it in the diagnosis of medical problems. Speaker, Australians rightly asking this. When did we go from a country whose government stood up for people, not stood on them? When did we become a country that has safety nets to stop people falling through the cracks to one where this government actually pushes people through them? A country which has the highest wealth inequity chasm in history. When did this government lose sight of the Aussie ethos working together for the common good? To one which focuses on greed and deception of taxpayer dollars. A government where wage theft is an acceptable practice. When did the government decide the people with disability and those with the least to give be the ones who carry the can for those with the most in their pockets? A government that wants to force farmers off their land so global mining giants can pillage the land beneath them and frowns upon those working in blue-collar jobs. A government that offers more protection for those who steal workers' wages than it does for the victims themselves. A country whose government is watching wages stagnate and costs go up as Australians with more and more Aussies in housing stress, where families are now paying on an average 46 per cent of their wages on a mortgage compared to that of 17, uh, seven years ago. I'll tell you what, it was on May 18, 2019. The re-election of a government through a deceptive campaign which has done nothing to help everyday Australians. A government that, when people needed leadership, the PM had taken off overseas and keeps blaming the opposition. Australians have many things to be proud of. This current government is not one of them. And it's people in communities like ours out in the outer suburbs and, and the rural fringes that are suffering the most. No investment in, in major infrastructure for seven years under this government. We can't get a single road project. The massive amount of population that is moving out to the north of, of Victoria, and we can't get simple road projects, um, simple upgrades to schools, medical, all these things, a failing NBN, an NBN that was the envy of the world under the Labor government. But now it's a joke. In fact, in, in many areas, Telstra are now cutting their 100 megabits per second um, plans because they can't deliver it. They can't deliver it because this government changed from an NBN to an MTM, which became known as Malcolm Turnbull's mess. A place where fixed wireless, please, the member for Barker shouldn't interrupt because all you do is just show you don't have to have a long neck to be a goose. You know, we see every single day businesses can't function because of this government's failure to deliver a proper national broadband network. We were leading the world in these things. We were a country to be proud of what we did and what we're doing. But under this government, we have seen Australia's rankings in many, many different uh, categories fail and fall backwards. Because this is a government that's not interested in working for Australian people. It's only working for itself. The, re the actual fact that we sit here today and we listen to government members carry on like pork chops, while we know that there is billions of dollars of taxpayers' money being deliberately rorted. These programs have been corrupted by a government that has no integrity and no Australian values. It's all about its own self. Its own survival is far more paramount than what we do for the country. That's why we have a government that is seeing emissions rise. We have minister after minister after minister after minister being investigated because of rorting, investigating because of their actions that is outside of what should happen. 
we want to talk about the integrity in parliament, the integrity about democracy, we can't look at this lot opposite, because there is none. It is a total vacuum of integrity and decency. And each and every day, Australians have to wake up and face what they've got, a government that does not care about what they're doing. Each and every single day, people go to, to school, kids go to school, and they sit there and they're looking at classrooms that need repairing, stuff that needs to be done. We're watching, as I said, we're watching kids fall backwards. And what does the education minister do? Nothing. And this is an education minister that thinks Africa is a country. Let's remember that. That's our starting point. We see a government that has continually done nothing but allow the, the extremists in their party to control. We see a government that is run by the back bench of the National Party more than what it is run by the front bench of the Liberal Party. We see that each and every day. This is a government that has failed Australians on each and every level. And what it is doing is really dragging us backwards. A country of ours that is so great and has delivered so much across the world. And what do we get? We get a government that has no faith in its people, no faith in the country's ability, but is too busy focusing on itself. The more and more we look at this, the worse and worse it gets. There is not a member on that side that can actually stand up and say they've got the integrity to do their job properly because they haven't. Or they would be standing up each and every day and saying, you know what, as a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, you'd be doing everything you could to do the best for your kids and your grandkids. But this government does it. You only have to listen to the rhetoric. They focus on the now. They're not interested in the future. They're not interested in building wealth. They're not interested in building a greater society. They're only interested in building their own egos, and Australians are paying for it. We, we've seen the carry-on over Holden deciding to close. Well, we knew that was going to happen. Of course that was going to happen, because this government ripped the guts out of it. It went to an election saying, we're going to destroy the uh, auto industry. Well, it's one thing they actually started that they completed. And now we do not have an Australian <laughs> manufacturer of motor vehicles. Everything has to be imported. However, the one thing that they will continue to do day in, day out, without, favour, without fear or favour, is to make sure that they feather their own nests above everyone else's. <laughs> Australians are paying every day because of the incompetence of this government. And the sooner it ends, the sooner the nightmare is finished, the better we are off as a nation. We will see better health care, we will see better climate policies, we will see better employment, we will actually get a government that actually wants to help Australians. As I said, to stand up for them, not stand on them. And that is the difference between this side of the House and that side of the House. We're not focusing on our own importance like they are. We're focusing on the nation's importance, and that's a difference. We're not running a government where each and every day you just don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to have the member for New England have another hissy fit, do another weird little video and come out there and then start attacking the Deputy Prime Minister? We don't know. We don't know what the member for Dixon is sitting there doing day in, day out, plotting away. We just know that he's not sitting there quietly. It's time that this government focused. The member for McCoolan resume his seat, the minister. Oh, just in relation to um, the speaker reflecting on members, the member for Dixon and the member no, for New No, no, there's no so point of order. No. The member for McEwen has the call. Thank you very much, Speaker. And that's just the, the simple thing, a protection racket of stupidity that runs in this government. Australians deserve a lot better than the pathetic excuse we've got running the government. The 